Hi and welcome back and today we're going to be looking at modelling its hand. Uh, I'm going to get started straight away. I'm going to select this loop and hide the mesh. Oops, no, not the whole mesh, just the mesh. I want to keep that loop. There we go, get rid of that. Alright, hands, they're uh, kind of tricky, so we're, that's why we're focusing on this in its own tutorial. And the first thing I want to do is model the fingers, and then I'll work on the topology of the hand. So I'm adding a cylinder, just taking away the end caps, and reduce the vertices to 8, and just reduce the radius down to something finger-ish. That's about right. And I'll put it into position. Okay, that's good. Now I'm going to put in a couple of edge loops and I want to uh, try and find a, uh, my actual uh, X and Y directions are off because the finger is at a weird angle and I can't seem to find a local angle to work with which is a pain in the ass. I could uh, make a custom orientation but I'm not going to. I'm just going to work with the mesh as is. Just make it a little bit longer on the tip by extruding. Pressing E to extrude and pulling it out. Badly. I'll add another little loop in there, and that gives us the finger joint. Uh, just straighten that up a bit. That gives us the finger joint and the. I'm not even sure what they're called, the fingery knuckle bits. Now I'm going to select the top of those knuckle bits and insert them and then just pull them out a bit to get some definition that we can use when we come to rigging so that we can get some good deformations in the finger. This just allows the top of the finger to stretch out a little bit. I'm just tidying it up here. Yeah, I'll allow the top of the finger to stretch out over the knuckles without stretching the uh, main mesh bits. Make the final phalange, I think they're called, a little bit longer. Uh, no idea really. And if I inset this face that I've just made, just a tiny little bit, and then rather than just pulling it out, if I uh, just put a little bit of stretch on there, awkward with uh, not having a proper orientation for the widget but that's okay. Okay so I stretch that out and select these two faces and rather than just pulling them up I'm going to extrude them ever so slightly and that gives us our fingernails. All very simple, very quick. And now I'm just going to close up the front of the finger I'm putting in a quite a bit of uh, edges and vertices here because uh, I want it to deform nice well the fingertip won't deform but I want to maintain some sculptability in here if I just have the one face or four faces that I would normally get I wouldn't be able to get the shape properly just round it off a bit oh, that, looks, that looks fine ok now I'm going to do the same with the bottom of these knuckle joints that I did with the top except I'm going to make them thinner because this is where the finger will crease inwards just going to give it that little bit of 
geometry to crease naturally. Hounds are pretty notorious for having loads of geometry which is why we're modelling it separately from the main model. As you see when we get into the actual hand section there's a lot of geometry and the wrist that we took off that little ring at the back there I'm just duplicating these fingers so that we have equal fingers four fingers for our beast yeah that ring at the back that we were just talking about we need to maintain the number of vertices on that ring so it joins up with the body mesh and if we were to just model the hand on the on the body itself just as an extension straight from the body would be adding so much geometry to the body that it would uh, mess up the loops and topology so that's why we're modeling it separately and I'm just adjusting the shape of the fingers I'm selecting the whole finger and pressing shift s cursor to selected and I'm rotating around the cursor just by selecting the top ring there and selecting all the finger and that allows us to scale from the cursor and it's giving us thin fingers and skinny fingers which is uh, not ideal this whole thing is going to turn out absolutely horrible, which is the thing about hands. It can be very, very bad. I'm now just joining the fingers together by selecting faces and pressing F. And then pressing Ctrl R to get a loop cut in the middle, just to give us uh, that flexibility between the fingers. Select the entire loop with Alt and dragging first knuckles the first knuckles it only has one set of knuckles but you know what I mean the knuckle area oops I've uh, pressed one to go into front view and it threw my view off into space but we're back now so I'm just angling the fingers up so that they line up with the sh direction of the f body I'm extruding the back of the hand. I'm going to join the fingers and start building the palm. Now the first thing I do is mess up, obviously. Now the first thing I'm doing is just checking my geometry. I can see that I can fit the faces in there, but we're not going to have enough edges to connect all the fingers without having thousands of triangles. So what I'm going to do instead is delete these faces and I'm going to inset this um, edge, edge of the hand and I'm going to delete the last two faces and stretch out, oops, stretch out the inner bit so now I've added two extra edges without creating any extra geometry on the back end and I can just join those fingers up like so Now I'm going to start stretching out the top of the, uh, no it's actually the palm of the hand this bit. I'm going to drag out the middle bit of the hand. The bit that goes in between the fingers. So I'll pull it out gently and I'll merge those at the centre and create a face. So now I have a what's called a diamond face. I'll just do that for the, each section in between the fingers. That's easy enough. There we go. Now I'll join those all together by selecting the tops of the fingers, extruding them outwards, and just going in and filling those faces. Uh, but not like that because that makes a mess. Didn't do what I thought it would. So I'll undo that and I'll just fill faces manually. You can see I've left that first one because I don't have the loop on the side of the hand just yet. And I'll 
deal with that in a moment. But first I'm going to start building up the palm. And I'll, and I'll fill that in now actually, while I'm thinking about it. Now I want to start on the thumb area. I don't want any geometry in this area, so I'm just going to deselect that middle bit. Um, didn't want a full face in there, I just wanted edges. There we go, that's it. Now if I subdivide this, just to give us a vertice in the middle. Alright, that's good. That'll be the area that we extrude our thumb from. I'll just round it off a little bit. Subdivide it again. Extrude out edge of the hand and there we go that's the that just balances it up a bit and now I've pulled out this another section starting into the actual meaty bit and I want these loops to kind of flow around the thumb and into that fleshy area that goes between the thumb and the fourth finger. So I'm just going to work on uh, building up some geometry around the hand and that fleshy bit. If I make that a nice diamond so that the actual flow of loops goes around the back of the thumb. I've done something wrong here, that's not right. Um, I'll just uh, have a fix of this quickly and remove that edge. Fill that face in and... No, it's going to go wrong. I could fill that face but it would be wrong so I'm going to... Uh, uh, yeah, if I take this vertice and... Yeah, that'll do. If I match it up to that one there by pressing Alt M, merge at centre. Blam, that's it, that's, that's got it, I think. Yeah, that looks alright. Okay, I'll start extruding here. And uh, oh, I have nothing to connect it to, so we'll get back to that in a moment. <coughs> Let's fill these faces for now. Uh, what's going on? Back up. Uh, I've got an extra vertice there, I'll just delete that. X, delete vertices. That's it, we're back to how we should be. Now, if I subdivide this, two cuts and fill those faces. There we go. And now we should be able to just put a couple of loop cuts in here to join those faces. I'll pretty much finish off the palm. Do that. I will just put some loop cuts in there. Three will match everything up. And just bridge those using the uh, loop tools. If you don't have loop tools, they are uh, in your add ons. Just to user preferences and under add-ons type in loop tools it'll give you that menu just check it and you'll have those good to go okay so now we've pretty much got the palm sorted I just want to tidy it up a bit because we don't need all these lines so if I merge that into one and create that into a single face make sure nothing's overlapping there that's it. Now if I bring this edge down to join with that we should be good to go. I, oh no I've missed, I've forgotten that edge where we inset it previously. I forgot to uh, account for that. Well, that's okay because I can 
use that edge and fill it in and you'll see oh no that's not a problem I thought we were going to have to do something weird but if I stop rolling it around if I just delete this edge and connect it to there I didn't delete it I ripped it with the V key there you go and that's our hand done ish for the palm anyway now I'm just moving vertices around to give it some vague shape and now we do pretty much the same on the back just fill in that face there and then I'll extrude out all these little diamonds that we made earlier on the front we're going to do the, exactly the same on the back if I just select them press E to extrude now I can't merge them all at once so I have to go through and merge them individually which is a pain but no hardship really I'll just select those ends Alt M merge at center Alt M at center Alt M merge at center there we go and now we just fill the faces by selecting them all and pressing F there we go and now we can go in and fill up those gaps so it's coming on fairly quickly um, when it, when it, we haven't been going long and we are already almost halfway done through the hand We've still got the thumb to do and a bit of tidying up and making it look like a hand of course at the moment it looks like um, a mess <laughs> But that's the thing, see, because we're going to go into sculpting in the next episode, we only need to worry vaguely about the topology, make sure that all the loops are flowing in the right directions. I'm not worried about the thickness of the fingers. Finger. Oh, learn to talk, man. I'm not worried at the moment about the thickness of the th fingers because um, when I come to sculpt it I will be able to adjust that and then adjust the underlying mesh accordingly using the multi-res modifier I've just extruded that out so I've got enough faces now to fill up the side of the hand up to the last point nearly yeah you can hide a lot of defects with sculpting but you need to have everything right at least workable for when we come to animating because if your loops aren't right then when you animate your model's not going to look right it'll just scrunch and make a mess and be really really horrible and I was going to do a little animating video I'm just tidying up here I was going to do a little rigging video for as a special but um, it all started to go horribly wrong um, which is why this video is kind of delayed uh, for those watching next week um, this video was uh, a few days late in being produced and that was because we had problems rigging um, doing a rigging demonstration but as I'm going to be uh, fixing the full rig on this model anyway that, that that actual demonstration was a little bit redundant in itself anyway so we will get to all those secret things that I was going to show you in a couple of videos time uh, yeah I'm just tidying up this little hand I filled in the back of the thumb and now I'm coming to actually need to apply the thumb so what I'm going to do is rather than extruding and creating a thumb from the actual model I'm just figuring out this loop rather than creating a thumb from the actual model I'm going to take a duplicate of one of the fingers and 
model the thumb from that, which as you can see the fingers aren't really ideal for making thumbs, so they're long and skinny and it's going to take some fixing in sculpt mode, but meh, we can deal with it because we're awesome. Alright, I'll just shift D this finger. There we go. Oops. I've missed a couple of uh, vertices there in duplicating. Not a problem. Let's put the 3D cursor into the middle of the finger and rotate around it. Rotate it so that it's pointing in the direction of the thumb, which is just across the hand in a gripping pose. Actually with the fingers pointing out like that the thumb would be lying uh, alongside the hand. It's all very weird. Uh, I'm not a anatomy student. I'm just kind of referencing by looking at my own hands to see how they how they fit together and how that relates to uh, to the model badly. <laughs> my hand looks nothing like this hand. Don't judge me. This is... Uh, I'm just taking the bottom of the um, thumb bone and merging it into that loop that we created. I think that's uh, easier than bridging the gap. Oops, I've uh, made a mistake there. Selected the wrong vertice. There we go, that's the right one. Yeah, and um, that looks atrocious. So I just need to uh, rotate there. Just put my cursor in there. And just merge it down and scale it out. Uh, not merge, rather edge slide. Pressing G and G again to uh, to slide the edges. And now I'm just moving bits of mesh to make that thumb look a little bit more natural. Select the whole thumb and press R to rotate it. I seem to have caught a vertice in the back of the hand. I'll fix that later. I'll just scale it up a bit. Why do I scale it up? It's ridiculous. I'm just going to slide the edges down a little bit to reduce the whole actual size of the thumb because we don't need a stupidly long thumb. It's bad enough the way it looks at the moment. Just using my C button to paint select the thumb and then I can just grab it and move it back a bit, reduce it down slightly. Just I'm a bit concerned about not having enough geometry around the thumb, so I've just ripped the vertices at the back. I'm going to create a little loop around there. Well, at least that's the idea. Doesn't really appear to have done much. Never mind, I'll carry on. kind of uh, loops around in the wrong direction if you look at it closely. Ah, this model is such a fail. <laughs> It'll be good, trust me. Don't trust me, it's rubbish. <laughs> oh my god. I'm glad I didn't call this a tutorial, seriously. Uh, there we go. I just filled those faces in because we 
fortunately had enough vertices to cover the whole of the um, hand at the last and now I'm just going into my sculpt mode and I'm smoothing out the back of the hand and just working it tidying it up with the sculpt tools. I'm, I don't have any extra geometry here I'm just using what already exists and I'm going in with my inflate button to add a bit of thickness to the hands especially around the thumb and because I don't really have much geometry in there at the moment the sculpt tools aren't as effective as they could be but now it's time to put the hand back onto the wrist so I'm just oops what have I done never mind I just select both loops and I will use my loop tools again and bridge them and because we managed to maintain not adding any extra vertices on the hand we maintained the amount of loops that we started with and we could bridge those nice and simply without messing up the model which is why we modelled it separately in the first place and happily it all worked out rather nice okay as you can t <laughs> <coughs> uh, <laughs> excuse me um, yeah those hands look perfect <laughs> um, yeah okay um, We'll just tweak those a little bit. The proportions are a little bit off. <laughs> well, it's a creature, and it's a it's a fan <laughs> it's a fantasy creature, so it doesn't matter. Having big hands is awesome. <laughs> oh, you got to love blending. <laughs> okay. Um. Yeah, I'm just going to tidy these hands up a bit. I'm making the wrist joint a bit smoother and I'm putting in a little bit of definition for the creases of the hand um, I could do more, I might refine it a little bit later it's going to need some refining anyway but I'll do that on my own later I'm just going to smooth off the wrist now take out some of those weird bulges well, I'm just swap over to my polish tool for some reason polish seems to be appropriate I pinch that crease in a little bit uh, it's not as effective it'll work better when there's more geometry <coughs> Alright, that looks ludicrous. Uh, proportions. <laughs> I'm, I'm going to fix this up right now. I'm just going to uh, move, scale the hands down a little bit and move the forearms to reduce them. Oops, not hide them. Reduced, there we go. Just rotate the hand round a little bit, move it into place. There, that's a bit better. You can still slap his own knees without bending down now, so I'll just shorten his upper arms. little touches that just bring it into a not a believable state but a more appropriate state <laughs> and that's it pretty much his head's tiny we'll fix that later but for now that's it we're done and we will move into actually doing some sculpting in our next video get the multi-res modifier on there and 
before I do that what I'll actually do is I'll fix the head because it's a little bit tiny at the moment and then uh, once the head's fixed I'll apply the mirror modifier and we'll get on with sculpting so if you want to um, watch that for some reason <laughs> just to soon as screw up some sculpting that will be amazing so don't forget to subscribe and there will be a new video um, hopefully next week I've got guests coming for Christmas so it might be a bit late or it might be early I'll try and get it done by the weekend but who knows uh, quite a lot on I'll, I'll try and get this done by the weekend yes okay but for now that's it we're done so subscribe and don't forget we'll see you in the next um I don't even know what to call this anymore. This walkthrough thing, this embarrassment. <laughs> Let's just call it a Christmas joke. <laughs> uh, who knows? Alright, I'll see you in the next video. Thank you very much. Bye bye.